Today we're going to be ranking all the Netflix shows I have watched in February from worst to best, so let's get started. <music> Hey everybody, my name is Justin. I love to watch movies. I also love to watch Netflix. If you guys do too, you guys are in the right spot. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and click that bell notification for more up and coming videos. Today we're going to be talking about all of the February Netflix shows that I watched and we're going to rank them from worst to best. Here is a list of all the shows that I did watch. Unfortunately, I did not review a few of these like Lock and Key and Gentified as well as Cagister of an Insect Cage. I had plans to review those. Life happens. I just did not review those for you guys, but I did w end up watching all of those episodes. So before I go into my list, what shows did you watch in February on Netflix and how would you rank them? Let me know in the comment section down below. And are you guys enjoying all of my Netflix reviews? Let me know as well. So coming in at number eight is Spectros. Spectros was a bad show. I really did not like this show. The blending of the different cultures I thought it was interesting, but it seemed like a really repetitive show that unfortunately felt like it was going nowhere. They repeated a lot of their sequences in different styles, same dialogue. None of it really worked for me. It was a show that I felt frustrated constantly as I was watching it and watching these teenagers go through uh, the day and night and holding on to this baby doll that could have that had ashes in it which could stop the undead was initial idea that I found to be interesting but it did not pan out the way I thought it would. Coming at number seven is Gentified. Gentified was an entertaining show. It was a lot about a Spanish culture and a family trying to keep their restaurant afloat and there was a blend of different families and friends and different cultures. It was a good look into people's lives and seeing what things meant to them and how much it meant to them. I think the show did a good job of capturing this restaurant that meant a lot to this older guy and how in the history behind it and how everybody would kind of get together to save that restaurant. It was a very bright show. It was a quick watch. It was entertaining. And I thought it had some really good acting with some really good filming as well. It was a show that definitely kept me engaged. Coming in at number six is The Expanding Universe of Ashley Garcia. This is a kind of teen rom-com show. You had this girl who's really smart. She's already graduated college and she's moving to California to live with her uncle. And I swear that this is the same house from Two and a Half Men. It looks identical to that house and so she's living with her uncle i like her uncle in the show he is trying to be like a father figure to her he's trying to be a guardian and he's kind of learning new things and i like his storyline within the show ashley garcia was an entertaining character as well he had some really fun characters in here really good progression for the character uh she's now just trying to live her life she's trying to make friends because she's been and books for so long and having an education. Now it's kind of her time to have some fun. And I think that captured those moments really well. Coming in at number five is Glitch Text. This is the new Nickelodeon show that's on Netflix, part of their deal. And I thought it was a really upbeat, fun show that had these two kids work at a store and it's kind of a front for them as they're capturing these glitches from games. And it kind of reminds me of like Ghostbusters with Men in Black. I thought it was a really fun show that had a lot of elements from video games in it. Uh, different kind of genres were presented in the show. The characters were a lot of fun. The animation was bright and upbeat and very colorful. So I think Glitch Text is a promising start to this new Netflix deal with Nickelodeon. And I'm curious to see what they do next. Coming at number four is Cagister of an Insect Cage. This is an anime show that I was interested in watching. I wanted to watch at least one anime show a month and I watched one in January. I have some planned for March and Cagister of an Insect Cage is one that I did watch and I think the idea of it's pretty crazy. It started off really slow and I think it picked up in the middle part of the season where it kind of started to introduce some backstory to how these Cagisters became into this world and it's just 
people that turn into insects, really massive insects, and it becomes pretty brutal towards the middle half of the series. Once they kind of get in depth with the history of these people and some of the characters, I think it definitely does work. It starts off really slow, having these characters kind of live their life inside this small little town and why people don't like this one guy. I think it started off really slow and I thought, okay, where's all these exciting moments and where's the intrigue for this show? And it picks up and becomes a blast. Coming in at number three is I Am Not Okay With This. I Am Not Okay With This stars Sophia Lillis from the movie It and she is a really interesting character that has a superpower and it is kind of like a John Hughes movie. She can't control it. When she gets angry or anxious, her powers come out. And we didn't get a lot of exploration for her powers. And we're going to get a season two because with that cliffhanger, we're going to get one. But I really like the blend of the different genres. I think it definitely did work. You uh, were invested in her high school moments with her relationships. We also invested in her powers as well. It was a really, really quick watch. I think there was like seven episodes and each one was like 19 to 28 minutes long. So it was a really brief watch. And they did a good job of giving enough character growth for the character, uh, not feeling like you were missing out for something. So I really did appreciate the character growth for her and uh, the introduction to some of the powers and having and seeing how she can kind of control it. And the cliffhanger for a season two gets me really excited to see what they do next. Coming in at number two is Altered Carbon season two. The show was set 30 years after the last season of Altered Carbon and starred Anthony Mackie as Takashi Kovacs. And I thought that they did a great job of incorporating him into the show. Also having a whole new world, whole new society, new rules and everything. It was a total blast. This felt like a more personal story for Kovacs while having some new characters, some old characters returning. Definitely had a good progression for him and felt more personal. There's a little more backstory for Cal Chris Falconer. And I was so happy that the AI who runs the hotel came back and we have a companion for him, Miss Diggs. So I thought that worked really well for the show as well. I watched Altered Carbon season one before watching this season and I love the connection between both season and the past previously for Takashi Kovacs' life and how it connected into season two. It definitely had a lot of surprises in there. It's brutal. Episode three is my favorite, so definitely check out episode three if you're going to watch the show. Make sure you get past episode three because it is a brutal fun time. But coming in at number one is Lock and Key. I did not review Lock and Key, but I was really, really invested in the show. I fell in love with it. I love the world. I love the mystery behind it, the different keys, the different characters what it presents and it's not a show that gets boring it introduces something new each episode a new key that unlocks something within you or a whole new world or whatever it may be the show always managed to stay fresh even if it was a really long series to get through it always managed to provide something new for the characters and the audience as well. And that's one thing I really did appreciate about Lock and Key is that it never felt bored. And, I'll, and I loved all the different things that were presented and the things that this family could do with these keys and the mystery behind it as well. It definitely built up that mystery throughout the show of what are these keys, why are people after these keys, and what are the keys in general because... It is a big mystery of this family who goes to live at this house and they start to experience things and see people and they have these keys and it's just a total blast. It was a show that unfortunately it took me a while to get through. Uh, I didn't get to review it for you guys. So I really don't like reviewing things after like a weekend that it's said and done because it kind of loses interest. I like to review it that weekend or not at all. So I didn't get to review it for you guys, but I really did like Lock and Key, the world, the characters, the mystery behind it. It was a great show. So there you guys have it, all of the Netflix shows I watched in the month of February. How would you rank the shows that you watched and what shows should I check out in the month of March? Stay tuned for more Netflix movie reviews and show reviews as well. My name is Just Watch Movies and you guys stay classy.